It's time to make it. Just give it a try. Cause you can make it like the old fat guy. Welcome to You Can Make It. I'm David Farrell, the old fat guy. Today I'm going to make apple sausage pork loin. When I was growing up, I liked a pork butt. We'd have one on the weekends and it was a real treat. But I've been informed by a higher power that pork loin's better for me because it's got a lot less fat. The problem with cooking a pork loin is it can dry out because it has less fat. So what I've done is created this recipe to put some sausage meat and stuff the pork loin with it. Don't tell she who must be obeyed, who's my wife, that when I stuffed it with the pork sausage, it most likely adds all the fat back, but she doesn't need to know that. We'll just keep that between ourselves. In order to make it, you have to stuff a pork loin. I got a nice little two pound piece of pork loin roast here, but you'll notice that it's not very thick. On some roast, people try and cut into it and stuff stuff into it. I find it better if you can lay it out flat. And I do something I call a book cut. That's no cooking term, that's just what I call it but it involves cutting the meat into one long thin slice. And I do it by starting about a half inch below the surface of the meat with a really sharp knife. And I just slice into it and I keep going until there's about a half inch left that I haven't cut through. Just like that. And then I turn it around 180 degrees and I open that flap up. And then I go down about a half inch below that, right there, and I start cutting the other way. And we keep going until there's about a half inch left. Now you gotta be real careful you don't cut yourself, so put your hand up there. And there we go, there's another one cut with a half inch left, and we'll open that up. And we'll turn it, and we'll go a half inch down farther, and we'll cut through now you don't have to worry about it being exact, you just want to get a thin piece of meat. When it rolls up it'll look beautiful. There we go. And it's getting a little thin in a spot there, so you want to be careful not to cut through too thin. You're better to have a thick part. But you can cheat a little bit now by cutting back this way, just a bit on that fatter piece. And just do it until, there we go, you sort of get part way down. And then you can open it up a bit more. There we go. So now, you've got one big long fat piece of meat. And don't worry about that little cut, it'll fix itself up when we do it. Now the important thing is to know that this fat has to be on the other side so it's sitting on the outside of the meat. So I'm just going to flip this over and we're ready to stuff it. Now to make our stuffing, it's a really simple stuffing, you just need some breakfast sausage. And what I have here is some breakfast sausage. You can buy bulk breakfast sausage or you can buy stuff sausages and squeeze the sausage meat out or you can make your own. But what you're looking for is some bulk sausage meat. And what I have here is about 325 grams or three quarters of a pound of sausage meat and I've got three quarters of a cup of diced apple. You'll note it's quite coarse diced. You want to see chunks of apple in your stuffing. So just put the sausage into a bowl and press it down on the bottom of the bowl and put your apples on top. And because they're chunky, you kind of have to fold them into it. Just like that. Just fold it over on top of it and keep folding it over until the apples are all kind of stuck into the sausage. Now you'll note I didn't do any salt or pepper or anything on the roast. Well, I would before I cut it, and I'm not going to do any after I cut it either. And uh, I'll just be putting it on. Now, you need to know that while I'm doing this, I've already got one of these roasts in the oven. 
I'll just prepare this one and show you what to do before it goes in the oven and then we'll pull the other one out and I'll show you how to finish it off. So there we are, the apples all kind of stuck into the pork sausage. So we'll just set that to one side and bring our nice piece of book cut pork back out. So what we'll do is just got to spread this sausage all over the cut piece. Just press it out thin. And like I say, you want them to see the chunks of apple. And try and leave about the inch on each end uncovered. That just helps to roll it. And get it right out to the edge. There we go. And like I say, try and leave that last inch uncovered. It just seals up better. And again, do not worry about perfection. By the time it's rolled up, it's going to look just great. So we have it spread out on the pork. And now you want to roll it up like you would a jelly roll. So just take, you see the fat end? Leave that to the last and start at the other end. And just roll it up. And you have a nice looking big piece of stuffed pork loin. But you want to tie it off because otherwise it can come undone in cooking. So I have some pieces of butcher string and I'm just going to put one under each end. Now when you're tying butcher string, a trick is to not just go over it once like you would with your shoelace. Instead, go over it twice. And then what happens when you pull the string tight, it stays tight while you do the next knot and the overhand knot. And there we go. And we'll just put another one at the other end. And if any apple comes out, just stuff it back in. And once again, go over it once, twice, and pull it tight and tie it off. Now this is a pretty big one, so I think I'm going to put a third piece of string around that. So I'm just going to cut another one off here. And put it around the middle. That'll just hold it neater. And it's going to go around once, twice, pull it tight, and finish your overhand knot. There we go. Now, just for good looks and making it look neat, we're just going to cut the ends off of those strings. So now that you've got the roast all rolled up, you need to take a roasting pan and put it with the fat piece up in the roasting pan. Now, pork loin, like I say, can tend to get dry, and the sausage helps with that, but I find it's better if you cook it with some liquid around it. So I have here one cup or 250 milliliters of chicken stock that I'm just going to pour in the bottom. That little bit of liquid will help keep it moist. And the other thing is they don't give off a lot of juice, so your gravy can be a little bit insipid. So I'm going to add to that one cup of onion chunks. And you'll notice that they're quite large. I'm not using them in the gravy. They're going to be strained out, but they'll add flavor to the gravy. So just spread them around just like that. Now this can go in the oven. It goes in a 350 degree oven. If you're doing it in a smoker, it takes about an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes. If you're doing it in an oven, it's going to take an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes because an oven doesn't have as much direct heat. The idea is you want to cook it to an internal temperature of 155 degrees Fahrenheit. We have the pork loin that I pre-cooked before we started shooting here, and it's all ready to go. It was in the oven for actually closer to an hour and 45 minutes at uh, 350 degrees, and I put it up to 400 degrees, just a little bit at the end to brown it up, but that isn't necessary. You want to take it out of the pan and let it rest. 
while we're making our gravy because that lets the juices soak through the meat. A uh, little bit of bad planning here. There we go. So we'll take it out of the pan and just put it on a cutting board and put some foil over it where we'll let it sit while we prepare our gravy. And what we're going to do to prepare our gravy is you want to get as much of the juice out of the pan as you can to use in your gravy. Now the onions were just in there to give flavor. They never look good when you do this, so you'll see they don't look very pretty. I'm just going to strain them through into a clear measuring cup because there will be a little bit of fat that we want to get rid of. Okay, there we go. Now you'll see that the fat separates up onto the top above the clear liquid that we want. So to get rid of the fat, I just use a turkey baster, squeeze the bulb, push it into the clear liquid, and let the turkey baster suck it up from under the fat. There we go. And we'll just put that back in the pan where we're going to make the gravy. Now you'll notice I'm leaving the onions in because that's there because they're going to cook yeah, while we, there's the last of the juice. The onions are going to cook in the gravy and we're going to strain them out right at the end. So now I'm going to show you how we're going to make the thickener for our gravy. Now you could use a roux, which I've made before, which is fat and flour. But we're going to go something a little lighter today, something is called whitewash or Chicago roux. And that's just flour and water. And the way you make a Chicago roux is you put some cold water into a uh, jar or any uh, sealable container. You want it to be quite a large one because you want to be shaking it. So just put the water in. And then you're going to add 25 milliliters or two tablespoons of flour. So we've got a quarter cup or 50 milliliters of water and 25 milliliters or two tablespoons of flour. If you like thicker gravy, you can put in uh, 75 milliliters of water and uh, 45 or 40 or three tablespoons of flour. But nice gravy come, I find, with just the 25 milliliters. So you put that in the jar and you seal it up and then shake the heck out of it. Now the problem with Chicago roux is it can tend to give you a few lumps, so it is important you strain your gravy after using whitewash or Chicago roux. But you can see that by shaking it, it gets a real nice milky consistency. That's what you're looking for. So let's just go over to the stove where we'll now make our gravy. I've brought my pan over to my stove and I've got it over a burner on medium high heat. And I'm going to add 375 milliliters or a cup and a half of chicken stock to the pan just to make a gravy. There we go. And don't worry about all those chunks in that in there. They're going to be strained out before we serve it. Now I'm just going to stir up all the stuff in the bottom of the pan because that all tastes so good. And we're going to bring this to a boil. The chicken stocks come to a boil. And so now we're just going to add our whitewash. And you just give it another shape to make sure it's really well mixed up. And you want to pour this in while stirring. Just slowly add it in. And then we're going to bring it back to a boil. You can see it's thickening up already. Now that it's back at the boil, we're just going to turn the heat down to a lower temperature and we're going to let it kind of simmer and bubble for three or four minutes. Otherwise, you'll get a little bit of a flour taste in it. This has been cooking for just sort of the three to four minutes, and you can see it's nice and thickened. Now, I don't mind this color of gravy for pork. It's natural pork color, but if you like a darker gravy, you can add two teaspoons of soy sauce to this, and it'll brown right up, and you won't taste the soy sauce. It'll just add color. The other thing you want to do at this point before you take it off is give it a taste, because it might need some more seasonings. The salt is perfect but I think this could use just a little bit of pepper. 
And there we go. So we're ready to strain our gravy. I'll just take this back over to my work spot. I've just got a little casserole with a strainer in it to strain the onions out of our gravy and the little chunks of port and schmutz from when you put it together. We're just going to pour that into our strainer. There we go. And let it come out and you got a nice thick creamy gravy. And we'll just wipe up my counter a bit here and set our gravy aside. We're ready to deal now with the pork roast, which we'll just bring back in. Now, why do you let meat sit? Well, the juices go through it and it firms up and it's easier to cut. So we're just going to take a slice off of our pork roast. Just let me get my carving knife. And I need a fork. And you just want to slice down. And you can see the stuffing is in each slice. And you can see the chunks of apple show through and give a nice display. So I think we're ready to try a piece. Now make sure you cut off the string before you serve your guests, but let's just try a piece of that pork. And we'll just move this out of the way. And get myself a plate and take a slice of the pork. And of course you need to have a little bit of gravy on your pork. There we go. And let's take a taste. It's my favorite part. Just make sure you get some sausage and apple in there. Mmm. So tasty. Sausage has sage and pepper and salt in it, so you don't need to add any more. The apple gives a touch of sweet, and the pork, even though it's a pork loin, is really moist, really tasty with a nice crisp crust. This is a great pork loin, and you can make it. In this recipe, David made apple sausage pork loin. The ingredients used were one kilogram of pork loin, 325 grams of bulk breakfast sausage, 175 milliliters of diced peeled apples, 250 milliliters of chicken stock, and 250 milliliters of onion cut into chunks. For the gravy, 375 milliliters of chicken stock, 25 milliliters of flour, and 50 milliliters of water. For the complete recipe, visit David's blog at oldfatguy.ca. It's time to make it, just give it a try. Cause you can make it, like the old fat guy. Welcome to You Can Make It, I'm David Farrell, the old fat guy. Today we're gonna to make something that kids love, adults love, it's just so Classic a meal for a family, it's sweet and sour pork. Now when you go to a restaurant and buy sweet and sour pork, what they do is they deep fry the pork first in oil. It's messy, it's not very good for you. I'd recommend doing it my way instead. My way doesn't deep fry the pork, so it's a little bit less fatty, but it's still really delicious. We're gonna start off by making a sweet and sour sauce. The ingredients in my sweet and sour sauce are going to be I have here 40 milliliters or three tablespoons of ketchup. And I have 40 milliliters or three tablespoons of red wine vinegar. And I have 40 milliliters or three tablespoons of brown sugar. 
you have vinegar and brown sugar, that makes it sweet and sour. Now, I'm going to add one milliliter of ground ginger for a little bit of spiciness and eight milliliters or a teaspoon and a half of cornstarch. The last addition is going to be two and a half milliliters or about half a teaspoon of soy sauce. And you just want to stir those together to make up a bit of a slurry. Oops, almost forgot. You've got to put 20 milliliters of the juice from some canned pineapple in your sauce as well. Now that our sauce is made up, we're going to start cooking the pork. You'll notice how fast this is going because I took the time to cut everything in advance. You can make the sauce and cut everything up in advance and it will be ready and you can cook it in just a few minutes. All this can be done up to a day before. So I have here my saucepan, or excuse me, my wok. You can also do it in a large fry pan. And I'm just going to add 15 milliliters or a tablespoon of oil. And we're going to heat it up until it starts to shimmer and just a little bit of smoke comes off the oil. That should just take a minute or so because I preheated the pan. And what I did was I took 250 grams of lean pork. I just used a boneless pork chop and cut it up into three quarter inch cubes. And just throw that into your wok. And we're going to stir fry for three to four minutes just to get the meat cooked through. So you can see the pork's getting nicely browned and the best way to test if it's cooked through is just to slice through one and look for any pink in the center. And you can see that that has no pink in it. So we're ready to go on to the next step. What we're going to do is add 125 milliliters of green pepper that I've cut into three quarter inch dice. 125 milliliters or a half a cup of red pepper and 125 milliliters or a half a cup of onions. We're going to stir fry these for one minute. Now we're just going to add two thirds of a cup or 175 milliliters of pineapple tidbits, just the canned ones. I like to cut them in half to make them a bit smaller. So we'll add some pineapple. And we're going to stir fry for just a couple of minutes more. So I've stir fried these for just a couple of minutes more. And now it's the time to add our sauce. It's really important you stir the sauce before you add it because this cornstarch will want to sink to the bottom. You just mix it up to get the cornstarch in it and pour it over the ingredients. Now this is going to take just a few seconds for the sauce to thicken up and get kind of shiny. There we go, nice and thick. You can see how it's got a bit of a sheen to it. That's all there is to it. So we'll just unplug our wok or take it out of your fry pan and put it in our serving dish. Look at the colors in that, the red and the green and the yellow. This is a really pretty dish. Okay, so we'll just get ourselves a little plate here. There we are. As you can see, this didn't take very long to make it all, but it is a delicious dish. So let's just get some to try here. Mmm. The pork is incredibly tender. There's a real sour hit from the red wine vinegar, not as strong as from white wine, but still a real good hit. The sweet offsets it perfectly, and those little chunks of pineapple are just treasures that you find in the middle of the meal. This is a great sweet and sour pork, and you can make it.
In this recipe, David made sweet and sour pork. The ingredients used were 40 milliliters of brown sugar, 40 milliliters of red wine vinegar, 40 milliliters of ketchup, two and a half milliliters of soy sauce, 20 milliliters of canned pineapple juice, one milliliter of dried ginger, eight milliliters of cornstarch, 175 milliliters of canned pineapple chunks, 250 grams of lean pork, 125 milliliters of diced onion, 125 milliliters of diced red pepper, 125 milliliters of diced green pepper, and 15 milliliters of oil. For the complete recipe, visit David's blog at oldfatguy.ca.